Over 160 prisoners are waiting for their execution day in Alabama. This is part 8 of the series. James Scott Largen, 13 years on death row. In 2009, a court in Tuscaloosa County condemned Largen to death after finding him guilty of capital murder in the murders of his parents, Jimmy, 68 years old, and Peggy, 56 years old. On the evening of March 15, 2007, Peggy and Jimmy Largen were at home where they were shot numerous times with a 22 caliber rifle and their bodies were tossed down the steps leading to the cellar. According to the findings of the autopsy, both victims' deaths were brought on by close-range headshots. A few days after the killings, University of Alabama police located his parents' automobile close to campus according to a story at the time by the Associated Press. At Largen's initial trial, the prosecutor claimed that he had no regrets about the murders. The jury's recommendation that Largen received the death punishment was accepted by the judge. He is now 52 years old. Justin White, 13 years on death row. Justin White, who was already serving a life term without the possibility of parole for the essay and murder of a college student in 2006, received a death sentence for the essay and strangulation of a teenager that took place four months earlier. Jasmine Parker, 17 years old, was killed on July 11, 2006, and her mother discovered her dead inside their apartment in North Birmingham with a pair of jeans wrapped around her neck. The first victim was Syria Black. She was choked by White with his hands, who then used the belt from her jeans to finish her off, as he told investigators, and it took her five minutes to die, according to Assistant District Attorney Lane Talbert. Black was then placed in the trunk of White's car and driven to Bessemer, where he displayed her like a prize to the neighborhood drug dealers. He is now 36 years old. Timothy Scott Boyle, 13 years on death row. After being found guilty of killing Savannah White, his girlfriend's two-year-old daughter in 2005, he received the death penalty. Savannah White was lying in a coma on the early morning of her second birthday. Assistant District Attorney Carol Griffith testified during the Gasden trial in 2009. She was unable to hear anyone wishing her a good birthday. The child's skull was not broken, despite the fact that she had been badly hit and pummeled in the head. The autopsy was performed by a forensic pathologist who testified that Savannah had bruises on her face, shoulders, and legs in addition to burns from cigarettes. Savannah's sister also gave a testimony claiming to have seen Boyle torture and burn her sister just before she passed away. The sister also had scars from what she claimed were burns caused by Boyle's cigarettes. He is now 40 years old. Ronnie Lynn Kirksey, 13 years on death row. In 2010, Ronnie Lynn Kirksey received a death sentence after being found guilty of murdering Cornell Norwood, the 23-month-old son of his girlfriend. The child's mother, Yolanda Norris, discovered her kid on the floor in a pool of blood, according to Deputy District Attorney Carol Griffith, who testified before the jury. According to Terry Ferris, a former Gadsden police investigator, Kirksey admitted to detectives that he had put a foot on Cornell and was standing directly on top of him. At the trial, however, he said that he just fell on the child. He is now 48 years old. Jesse Earl Schwing, 13 years on death row. Sean Adam Cook, a worker at a convenience store in Oxford, Alabama, was fatally shot by Schwing during a robbery in November 2008. After only nine minutes of deliberation, an Aniston jury found Jesse Earl Schwing guilty of capital murder and theft of property. James Potts and Tiffany Culp, two other Weaver's residents, were charged in Cook's death with capital murder. James Potts and his wife Tiffany have entered guilty pleas. As part of the plea agreement, Potts has to serve two life sentences, but Culp will only have to serve a total of 10 years in prison. Schwing is now 37 years old. Michael Brandon Kelly, 13 years on death row. After being found guilty of killing and torturing Emily Milling of Leeds, Michael Brandon Kelly of Moody was given the death penalty. The 23-year-old Milling's body was discovered by a road in St. Clair County. Milling was allegedly battered and suffocated to death, according to witnesses. Two unknown guys Kelly had met at work were to blame for the crime, he claimed. 
Before the verdict was handed down, Kelly's father, daughter, and the neighbor pleaded with Judge Jim Hill to save his life. Long-haul truck driver Kelly was detained on November 19, 2008, when federal marshals staked out a day's inn in the Los Angeles suburb of Pico Rivera. After that, he was sent to Alabama for trial. He is now 43 years old. Brian Gerald Russell, 13 years on death row. Russell was given the death penalty by Shelby County Circuit Judge Michael Joyner for the 2008 murder of his ward and cousin, Catherine Helen Gillespie, who was 11 years old. According to Joyner, the punishment met the requirement for the death penalty under the aggravating factors of being terrible, appalling, and cruel. According to the trial evidence, Russell shot the girl in the back of the head in the house they shared on Kerry Downs Road in the vicinity of Inverness. Russell shot her and then put her body in a plastic trash can that he put in the back of his SUV that was parked in the garage. Russell and Catherine Gillespie's relative, Tim Gillespie, praised Joyner's judgment as a just sentence and expressed his wish that it would be executed sooner rather than later. Before being given a sentence, Russell, who was dressed in an orange jail jumpsuit, was given the opportunity to speak, but he declined. He is now 50 years old. Michael Bragg Wolf, 12 years on death row. Wolf admitted to shooting his wife and two-year-old son while making a 911 call. That evening, a guy reportedly told an emergency operator, I just killed two people, my family, I need to go to jail. In the courtroom of Mobile County Circuit Judge Joseph Johnston, a jury listened to a recording of that call. He killed their two-year-old son Aiden and 30-year-old wife Angel Wolf. Towards the end of the evening on March 5, 2008, the mother and son's bodies were discovered in a trailer of Schillinger Road. According to the prosecution, Michael Wolf became fixated on whether the toddler was really his own son and killed the two people on purpose. Wolf was obsessed on the question of whether Aiden was really his son after learning that his wife could have had an affair, according to Mobile County Assistant District Attorney Joe Beth Murphy. He was the boy's father with greater than 99% certainty, according to a paternity test. However, the defense claimed that Wolf accidentally shot his son before shooting his wife when he became angry of what had happened. He is now 45 years old. Courtney Laurel Lockhart. 12 years on death row. Burke, an 18-year-old freshman at Auburn University, was abducted by Courtney Lockhart while being threatened with a gun. Burke was robbed by dishonorably discharged U.S. military veteran Lockhart, who also made her strip naked. He talked about his unemployment and bad luck while driving her around 30 minutes. Lockhart shot Burke in the lungs as she tried to run. Burke was abandoned on Alabama State Route 147, severely injured and dressed only in a pair of socks. The fact that Lauren Burke was able to notify police that her purse and ID were still in the assailant's car and that she provided the basic description of the assailant and the vehicle enabled police to identify the offender fairly quickly. Unfortunately, she passed away at the hospital. Lockhart is now 39 years old. Bart Wayne Johnson, 12 years on death row. Officer Philip Davis was shot and killed in December 2009 and Johnson was found guilty on two counts of capital murder. Davis pulled Johnson over and issued him a speeding ticket in Pelham at around midnight, according to the evidence at Johnson's trial. Johnson's then shot Davis in the face. Johnson argued that he was innocent due to a mental illness or defect. He had a brief psychotic episode when he shot Davis, according to testimony given at his trial by a psychologist hired by the defense. Given that it appeared the officer was making an effort to accommodate Johnson, his actions showed a callous disrespect for human life and a complete disregard for authority. Johnson is now 44 years old. Aubrey Lynn Shaw, 12 years on death row. After finding Shaw guilty of murdering his great-aunt and uncle at their St. Elmo farmhouse, the judge condemned him to death by lethal injection. In 2007, Shaw stabbed Bob and Doris Gilbert, 79 and 83, 50 times with a steak knife before looking through his great-uncle's pockets for cash and stealing two firearms from the property. It was a savage stabbing and slashing deaths of two very old and frail people. The victims' multiple defense wounds indicate that their deaths were likely drawn out and painful rather than immediate. 
Furthermore, they both endured the emotional anguish and dread of having to witness a spouse being savagely attacked with a knife while being unable to intervene physically. The Gilbert's property in South Mobile County used to be a horse farm where plenty of people came to ride horses for fun. Meanwhile, court testimony revealed that Shaw had been essayed by his grandmother when he was a young child and had developed a crack cocaine addiction as a teenager. He is now 49 years old. Corey Allen Wimbley, 12 years on death row. In 2008, Corey Allen Wimbley was found guilty of killing a business owner during an attempted robbery in Washington County. In connection with the shooting death of Connie Ray Wheat, 55 years old, Wimbley was accused of capital murder. The death sentence was upheld by the Alabama Court of Criminal Appeals in 2014. According to the available evidence, Wimbley prepared gasoline to bring to Harris Grocery, took a revolver, and even had an escape route. Wimbley packed the luggage and stole money from Ray Witt's pockets in addition to the cash register in order to travel to Tampa, Florida. He is now 37 years old. Tawan Towns, 12 years on death row. Christopher Woods was killed by Towns, who was committing a burglary. Towns intended to rob Woods, a reputed narcotics dealer. Woods shared a residence in Dothan with his girlfriend, India Starks. In a car with Cornelius Benton, Towns arrived at Woods' residence on November 13, 2008. He was armed with a 22 caliber rifle, and Benton was armed with a pistol that belonged to Towns' brother. Benton repeatedly struck Woods in the face to coerce him into giving them money as he begged for his and Starks' lives. Towns used the rifle to shoot Woods in the chest, and Benton continued to strike Woods. After shooting Woods in the knee, Benton kept punching Woods in the face and yelling for money. Man, don't do this, Woods yelled and begged, Starks overheard. Starks rushed to a neighbor's home after Woods was shot a second time to call emergency 911. She claimed that Woods was slouched in the chair, the room where the attack took place was looted, and her cell phone was stolen. Towns acknowledged that he and Benton went to rob Woods at his home because he was short on cash. He denied having any desire to murder Woods, though. He claimed that his goal was simply to frighten the victim. He is now 33 years old. Clayton Antoine Shanklin, 11 years on death row. In addition to being found guilty of murdering Michael Crompton during a first-degree robbery, Shanklin was also found guilty of trying to kill Ashley Crompton, Michael's wife. By a vote of 12 to 0 at the sentencing phase of Shanklin's trial, the jury recommended that he be given a life term without the possibility of parole. The circuit court overruled the jury's recommendation and sentenced him to death after receiving a presentence investigation report and holding a sentencing hearing. The court reasoned that the aggravating factors vastly outweighed the mitigating factors. Shanklin's request for a new trial was rejected by the court. He is now 38 years old. Jesse Livell Phillips, 11 years on death row. In 2009, Phillips fatally shot his wife, Erica Rose Phillips, and their unborn child in Marshall County. He was found guilty of capital murder and given the death penalty. It was the first case to be prosecuted and found guilty under Alabama's Brody Act, which classified killing an unborn child in an attack on the mother as homicide. On February 27, 2009, the shooting took place at an Alabama 69 car wash near Guntersville. After shooting his wife in the back of the head, Jesse Phillips left her body lying in a car wash bay. The next day, the 23-year-old passed away in a nearby hospital. According to court records, Phillips admitted to shooting the woman. He is now 44 years old. Please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.